Is that the world's largest concrete pump? What? No. No? That one is. That one is, huh? It's the same kind of concord, but nobody would even know the difference. All right, there's a crack here in the well, in the weld. Gouge it out, re-weld it up. So I wanted to show you guys something cool and awesome. And um, I haven't done an in-depth video in a long time here. These are hydraulic cylinders, 4,000 PSI pressure they run to pump concrete like 170 feet high up in that boom. And the base cap here where it's attached to the barrel the weld starts cracking and fluid starts leaking out. So I'm grinding that out, I'm gouging that out with a, with a heart wheel, like a quarter inch wide heart wheel. And um, I want to show you the whole setup I'm running here. I'm running, um, I gouge it all out with like a rock mount Electra disc. Um, I recently came across those, I said, well, grinding wheels are grinding wheels, right? What do you need? What do you need a grinding wheel for? And uh, when I saw how well these things hold up and how long they last, I mean, this entire job I did there, the grinding wheel in, in diameter didn't even shrink like, not even quarter inch, maybe not even eighth inch. So then I'm using this little uh, Stell DC uh, TIG machine. I bypassed the internal gas solenoid valve here and just running a heavy hitter 180 torch straight off the tank with a valve. And, um, yeah, so where this thing is located, you really can't get to it. So I put a piece of plywood on the fender so I can kind of lay there. And um, as filler metal, I chose some Rock Mount Brutus. I'm going to show you the specs here real quick. This is really meant for high strength, unknown metal. Uh, from the colors, when I welded, it looks like there's some stainless in there. Look at the tensile strength, high crack resistance, uh, shock resistance. That's exactly what we need on these cylinders because that's why they fail and where they always fail. So um, looking at, oh, I'm trying my headset here. And of course that didn't work. Initially I tested it and it was supposed to work so that I don't have to do a voiceover. I can explain it as I go. But um, that's just not, well, luck wasn't on my side there. You can see how the oil is on the bottom and on the top. You can see the hairline of the crack there. And you can see I'm about ready to weld and I see how that crack goes further on top. So now I end up grinding more out of there to like open that crack up, chase that. I'm ending up welding a good third, almost half of that cylinder, like all like overhead vertical up out of position here. I have it feathered on top some more. So that wall on that cylinder is about, it's a little bit more than half inch deep almost 5 8 and I'm like a good 9 16 into it. I'm using 8th inch tungsten, 2% seriated, that heavy hitter torch. Um, it's working out really good for me here. I got the first pass in. I didn't get good TIG footage on the first pass. I didn't have nobody to hold the camera. I'm going to fix that in the process here where I'm going to have my daughter help me hold that camera. But you can see it lays down pretty nice. It, it fuses good. And it helps you, that rod also helps you to deal with some of the uh, contamination that happens as that hydraulic oil residue burns off. I mean, the cylinder is completely drained, but you can never get all that oil out of that crack. So that helps you to deal with some of the, the carbon deposits from the, from the oil burning off. So to give you a little bit overview on how this is set up here, um, as I'm turning around, you'll see... There, I put the sheet of plywood down. I got oil right by my head, that's which is awesome. So I can lay in those oil steps there. You see the foot pedal back there behind the machine. So I'm kind of laying on my side, reaching around that beam with one hand over the top and one hand underneath, one hand fill a rod, the other hand the gun, and trying to like walk it in there and, and melt it all in there nice. So it's it's working, but then again, it's only working so good. So now here is another shot of the beat. You can see colors look good. No inclusions, no pinholes, no porosity. It's all it's all working out very well. Once I have a few tick beats in there, 
then I'm switching to stick welding this is still all TIG here even though the bottom kind of looks like stick but yes so after a few TIG beats originally I was just gonna do a root pass and then I it was going good I got carried away I did a few more passes with um, TIG and then I'm switching to stick and then I finally have um, my daughter helping me to film me so that kind of worked out alright for me so now here she is filming me and you can see initially I'm putting in another TIG bead here some filler metal cleaning action there just wiping the oil out, off that dripped off that uh, oil cooler hydro, uh, hydraulic oil cooler fitting that you see there the line and then um, just going for it A little side note for you guys here everybody who complained about the video camera being too shaky blah 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 this is what happens if you have a five-year-old first help you it's a little bit shaky by the time she's six she got this and if you think you can do this better you can you're invited to join me on any job and be the video camera man woman for me and film this and then we'll see what the people in the comments gonna say about your video skills so I think this is freaking awesome and steady here all freehand shot the video so enjoy. Now pay attention here, that foot pedal on the ground and the bottom corner right there, I'm working this with my elbow on the left hand as I'm holding the torch with the left hand and feeding filler with the right hand into the puddle because now where my foot pedal used to be, my cameraman is now standing so I can't even do this. So that's where maybe a hand control could come in handy but I think I'm doing alright working the pedal with the elbow as I'm trying to lay there and weld this all up so that's you know this ABC of welding I'm gonna call this the BS of welding this always be comfortable that never happens in real life in real life you either get the job done or you don't there is no comfort in welding when doing these things
So from here on forward, it's going to be stick welding. Brutus uh, rod from rock mount, eighth inch diameter. Uh, the literature says something like 95 amps. That's where I started. Then I ended up like 105 or so. I felt it ran better. I'm switching the ground cable from the TIG machine to the stick machine. And then just uh, welding everything out. Electrode. I tried some pulse. I tried some without pulse. Initially the pulse was okay, but on that stainless you do need a fair share of of arc and of heat to make this weld good. It runs cooler than a 7018 anyways. Has better strength, better elongation, so it, it worked out good for me. So that was the second to last pass, now here with the slag on, that's the final cap pass, removing the slag, revealing the final product.